Hello, and thank you for tuning into the Financial Empowerment Charlas, created by Nationwide in partnership with the Hispanic Heritage Foundation to help in your journey towards financial wellness. Today, we'll be discussing the state of our wealth as Hispanics in the United States and the ways we can start making changes so we can close the existing wealth gap and start to build generational wealth. I am Paul Roldan, Certified Financial Planner, and I'd like to welcome my two friends to discuss this topic, Vivi Shank, Financial Freedom Strategist. Welcome, Vivi. Thank you, Paul. And Karen Vergara, Fiduciary Financial Advisor. Welcome, Karen. Thank you. So let's jump right in. We've collected a series of stats or statistics regarding wealth and the Hispanic community. I, I wanted to start by discussing the reality we live in. And I'm going to disclaim that some of these realities might bother, might move you, right, rub you the wrong way. And we're very positive people, but I think it's important that we understand where we are so we can do something about it if we want to have effective change in the future. So one statistic that was powerful to me was the fact that white families in America have a median wealth of about $142,000 compared to Hispanic families where it lies at around $21,000. That's a huge difference, okay? So Vivi, what do you see as a possible reason for this vast gap in, in the wealth for Hispanics? Yeah, so one of the reasons is that despite having similar employment rates as white American families, and even though we are very likely and very able to have full-time jobs, Hispanics, we tend to work in jobs that might not be ideal for building wealth. We're more likely to work in positions with lower wages and jobs that don't provide benefits that are, that are essential for us to build wealth. You know, that's interesting. And I want to disclaim because I've heard the statistic and seen it. And I don't think it's that we choose to, to you know, look for jobs that make less. And right. we'll talk a little bit more about, you know, why that is. You know, there's some realities, some are circumstantial, some are just lack of awareness. OK, and this is not everyone. OK, but for that, you know, one of those is, for example, in the first episode, which I welcome you to listen to, we talked about the first generation immigrant, the person who came from their country. You know, and the reality is this, you know, my mother was an educated person in Cuba but she didn't speak English when she came here. Okay, so she couldn't work as a professional in her job because of that limitation. So she had to take a, a, a job that didn't give her the ways that she may have uh, earned in her, back in her country, but we're gonna survive, we're gonna do what it takes. But that is a reality, Vivi. So I appreciate the fact that we may have less income you know, as a household. Now, interesting, because if we have less income, tie that with one of our cultural values, which is familia. Okay, so familia in the first episode we talked is one of our common values uh, as Latinos, um, and that's powerful for us. But then it means we tend to have larger families, and we tend to actually support members of our family that may not live with us. For example, myself, I, uh, my mother doesn't live with me, but I support her. I want to honor the sacrifice she made uh, coming to this country um, and the fact that she's given me opportunities. So I'm going to support her uh, for the rest of her life. You know, Karen, what's your perspective on this? Yeah, I, I think the as I shared in that first episode, family comes first. And I think it's a beautiful thing, one of the most beautiful values that we can have as a Hispanic community. Mm. But I, I mean, this happens in my household. If uh, someone back, my husband is from Venezuela, so his family is basically all over the world right now because of the tough situation that, that mm. they're having over there. So if anybody calls us and says, we need money for medicine, someone's in the hospital, uh, we need money for food or, or Christmas gifts, we might forego our retirement savings that month because family comes first. And, mm. and, and I'm not alone in this. I know that so many Hispanics deal with this uh, on a daily, monthly basis. And again, it's part of our value system. But we just need to understand that that is also one of the things that creates this, this gap. Uh, and it happens when I talk to Hispanic clients all the time that they feel this need to continue helping their family. And again, I continue to say it's a beautiful value that we have, but we need to be cognizant that it's also something that could hinder us from building wealth and closing that, that gap that's currently there. No, that's very well said. That's very well said. Now, interestingly, we, we mentioned, Vivi, you mentioned that we might on average tend to make less money, so less income into the households, okay? Yeah combined with the fact that we need to spend it over more people possibly, okay, by the demographics and our values of who we are. Now, how does that translate into the systems that we live in for building wealth? You know, for example, 
if this is the case, when we go borrow money to buy a house, okay, well, we may be seen as a higher risk because we have less income. OK, so we may not be able to obtain a, enough financing to purchase, you know, one of the biggest assets that most Americans purchase, which is a home. And if we do get the loan because we're seen as a higher risk, it may be at a higher interest rate than someone who's making more money. OK, for the same amount of loan. So this is shown uh, in the numbers because the average Hispanic family has less debt, about a third amount of debt as the average American family. And yet the burden, which is the percentage of of the debt payment going to their income is actually higher for Hispanics. OK, than it is for white Americans. OK, so that makes it tough just from that perspective. And then, of course, that doesn't allow us to use resources and, and money to build assets such as retirement plans and all the other stuff that we, you know, tools that we're going to discuss in other episodes about investment opportunities. So, again, I mentioned earlier, we are very positive people. And the whole point of these charlas is not to depress anyone, OK, but to actually bring about awareness, OK, uh, of the real the real situations we live so that we can be intentional and strategic at taking steps and overcoming them and really pursue financial success. So with that in mind, okay, now that we've laid out the groundwork for this, the reality, you know, I, I'd want to discuss some ways that we can start overcoming some of these realities. So Vivi, you know, give me some, maybe one thing that we can start thinking about that we should do as a Hispanic people, as Latinos, to overcome this uh, gap. Yeah, the first basic thing I think is to get educated. I know there's many mm. things that it's not our fault of this rea this reality that we're facing. A lot of these things, it, it is not our fault, but we can assume responsibility from our side, you know? So learning about personal finances, it can really change things. And I know this because I've experienced this myself. Learning how to manage your money, how to get on a budget or a spending plan, as I know you guys like calling it, mm. it might sound tedious, it might be boring, but I promise you it's worth it. It's worth it because what I have learned is that lack of financial education will sooner or later pay a toll on you. And so if you can avoid you know, future troubles, then do so by taking control of it right now. And you do that by learning. And nowadays we have so much information available online. There are courses, there are books, there are websites, blogs, YouTube videos. We're going to be sharing our favorite resources in the website for your financial wellness.com mm -hmm. so that you can take advantage of this resource. And really like, take advantage of this resource. I promise you that it can transform your life. When you're on top of your finances, it gives you this sense of empowerment, this newfound confidence because you know what you're doing and that can transform things. It can give you peace. It can give you hope. It can give you this, um, you can start dreaming because you know that you can start building a legacy. You can start transforming your future generations. And it, as a community, also, you know that you're helping decrease this wealth gap that we are experiencing right now. That, that's excellent. So, you know, education uh, and you you specifically focus on the area of financial education, financial literacy, which is a huge challenge uh, for this country as a whole, especially, but also especially for Hispanics and Latinos, which again, the purpose of these uh, episodes. Uh, but I want to say education as a whole, as a whole, not just financial literacy. You know, I think there there is a wealth gap among white Americans and most uh minority groups, okay? But there was a study that showed that specifically amongst Hispanics, the wealth gap is driven more so by educational attainment, okay? Or lack of educational attainment. And we're gonna talk about this in a future episode that the more we get educated as Hispanic, the more possibility and probability we have of financial success, okay? So education, powerful tool. Karen, you know, let me hear your thoughts on maybe, you know, another idea uh, that could help us overcome some of this wealth gap. Start talking about money. Right. Let's stop making this a taboo subject and mm. let's ha start having conversations around the dinner table. Right. They're, they're going to be my husband and I, we don't have any children, but I know that the moment that we do our conversations with them are going to be so different from the ones I had with my parents at the dinner table. Right. Let's start talking about 
stocks and, and mm. companies that are going public and entrepreneurship and real estate, right? If we start talking about money with our own family members, with our loved ones, I think it's going to continue to close that gap because we are empowering others. Now we have to be careful also, again, if we're getting educated and we are getting information from the correct sources, then yes, go ahead and share it with others. And let's work as a community mm. to start making money a conversation that can be had that's going to be powerful that's going to help us build generational wealth over the long term you know that that's a powerful statement uh, what we're just talking about is normalizing okay the conversation right. of finances and financial success and and yes i agree that's powerful i remember when i graduated uh, from college uh you know I, had, I got my master's degree and then i got a job and my peers at work who had the same level of education some actually had less i had a master's a lot of them had bachelor's okay but they're talking about buying stocks and bonds and mutual funds in their brokerage account i'm like brokerage account i don't want an account that's going to make me broker i had no <laughs> idea you know I, you know, I had no clue what that was, but then I come to find out they did at a young age because as they were growing up, they saw their parents had it and they would talk about it. So it was a normal thing for them. It was not. And again, the power of these episodes of these charlas is that we are normalizing the conversation of finances. And to do that, to your point and to tie it to what Vivi said, is we need to get educated, you know, to have good, meaningful conversations. We need to, one, not shy away from it, but also be educated about it so we can have productive conversations with our families. So now we know that uh, Karen's baby is going to be uh, you know, some wealth guru. <laughs> Um, so, I hope so. There you go. So getting educated, having conversations, normalizing financial success in our families and the tools that exist to do that. Uh, Vivi, give me an, I know you guys have a lot of thoughts. So Vivi, what is another thing we can think about to start minimizing this wealth gap? Yeah. Another thing I, we need to take into consideration also is the wages that we accept. We need to start valuing the work that we do. Hmm. So I used to work with a family, right? And I remember talking with my boss one day and he just mentioned that he wanted to go to the gas station because he saw there's a lot of uh, Latins and Latino, Latinas uh, and Hispanics, right? Around there. And he wanted to get some of them so that they can work for him because he knew that they would charge him less. Like he said that and he wasn't even shy about it. Right. Wow. And that's a reality that we live in. I mean, it, it, it doesn't sound nice, but that's our reality. And I think that that I, I know I keep coming to this, but I do think that this is founded in a lack of self-worth. Mm -hmm. I do believe that lack of self-worth affects us in many ways. So we need to basically choose to value our worth. Right. Mm -hmm. And and I know that this might require some effort because I know I experienced this. I had to be very aware, like, wait, the work that I am giving is valuable. So I need to start asking for it. Right. And it might require this effort. It might feel like you're stretching yourself and to ask for that race, you know, or to say no when someone is offering you less. Right. And to not let others take advantage of you. And and yeah, just just don't be moved by fear. Mm -hmm. Don't be moved by fear of rejection, right? That, oh, no, they're going to say no if I give them a, a, a wage that is too high or this fear of missing out. We need to strive for more because we deserve it. So you need to re remind yourself that, you know what, you belong. It doesn't matter why you're here in the United States. You belong and the work that you have to offer is valuable. And you need to ask for what you're worth. You need to step out of your comfort zone and ask for what you're worth. So I think, yeah, that's it. Uh, we shouldn't feel like because of this sense of we don't belong that maybe our bosses are giving, they're doing us a favor by giving us a job. And that's why we settle for less. Right. It's, that's not true. You know, it's an exchange of value and what you have to give, it is valuable. So just remember, you know, you belong and you deserve to strive for more. That's that's powerful because, you know, sometimes uh, we limit ourselves, you know, as far as what we can accomplish, what we can attain. And some of it might be coming, as you said, you know, because we don't value ourselves. OK, or on the flip side of that as well, is that we, we don't believe that we can attain some higher level because we haven't been exposed to it. You know, or no one 
you know, uh, told us we could. You know, this is where role models become huge. You know, I remember I used to, I, I had the blessing of going to an Ivy League school for my education, and I would recruit. So I would go to high schools and recruit other Latinos because I wanted to, you know, help other people up that ladder. And I remember meeting with young high school students that were amazing, great qualified Latinos and Latinas, but they wouldn't even dream of applying to an Ivy League school. And I said, why not? Oh, I don't think I get in. And to me, I'm thinking, you're, you're a lot more qualified than I was when I applied and I got in. So, but it was no one told them they could, you know, so whether it's a lack of self-worth because of how we were groomed or because we weren't shown the opportunities to grow. So that's powerful education, normalizing success through conversations, making sure we value ourselves uh, at our worth. And sometimes that manifests, that lack of value in ourselves manifests in how we value others and doesn't allow us to grow in, in certain areas as we inter interact with other professionals. Karen, have you ever seen this to be the case? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's we we accept what we expect. And I read that mm. in, in a book uh, recently. And we will also just the way that we I, I think it's very Hispanic of us to want to always regatear, right? Haggling. Oh, wow. So then what happens is that we want others to value our work, but we don't value someone else's work. Mm. Okay. So if we want some others to value what we do as a profession and to pay what our work is worth, then we must do the same back. And I say that because it's so sad um, in our office. I see it all the time. Hispanic clients come in and they understand, okay, this is a new financial system. I want to get, you know, I really want to get ahead. I want to get better at this. And we tell them the price and then they say, okay, I'll think about it, which means I'm not going to do it. Mm. And it's all because they might think, you know what, I'm, I can do this myself. Or I can go figure it out on my own. I've got YouTube and Google, right? But just like a professional athlete has a coach, we also can, in areas where we lack knowledge, education, we can actually hire people that can do that for us or help guide us in that area, but understanding that we have to pay them what that what that's worth. So let's not just expect, um, you know, and continually expect uh, that someone is going to be haggling with us if we want the same kind of treatment back. You know, I think what you're alluding to, which is powerful, you know, is the fact, you know, Vivi talked about valuing ourselves, okay, uh, as human beings, and, and you're talking about valuing also time, you know, the time that you spend, that a professional spends, because that's a powerful lesson that even I had to learn, you know, that I had to overcome this mindset. You know, my, my dad uh, was a mechanic, so I learned a little thing or two about fixing cars, and, you know, me, pay a mechanic to fix, I can do this, okay, but then I had to learn, wait yeah. a minute, you know, the time I'm spending fixing my car, car, I could mm -hmm. be spending making money doing something else, okay, that I'm passionate, I can make more money, pay the mechanic and still have money left over. That's profit, right? That's right. So I have the sign in my office that says, what is the most important use of my time right now? Okay, I have to remind myself of that because I think it's a trap that we have to learn and overcome and constantly remind ourselves that we need to value our time and other people's time and be willing to invest um, to be able to grow. You know, if someone has done something well, I'm willing to invest and pay that person to teach me to avoid those mistakes. OK, because that'll really accelerate my path to success. And I think that's what you're alluding to, Karen, when it comes to, you know, that mindset of valuing time and other people's time. So, you know, these are very powerful points. And. You know, we talked about the sad reality of the wealth gap, okay? Again, why? Because we need to know that it's there and identify it so that then we can be strategic about making decisions that will help us grow on our path to financial wellness. You know, if we want to go from surviving to thriving, uh, we must value our story, our background, our experiences, and understand the why things are, the how things are, and the why we're building wealth uh, to move forward and to grow. Okay, so as you mentioned, as, as the ladies here, Vivi and Karen mentioned, through education, communication, self-worth, and behavior changes, we can close this gap. So I want to, Karen, thank you. Vivi, thank you for sharing, for being transparent uh, in this conversation. Thank you for tuning in. And be sure to check out other episodes at fouryourfinancialwellness.com, all part of the Financial Empowerment Chatelas created by Nationwide in partnership with the Hispanic Heritage Foundation. Thank you for listening.